It's midsummer. For Saffron events, it's the busiest time of the year. I think today we've got four weddings. It is busy because today, today we're sitting up for 500 guests. And maybe the smallest is, I think, 300. So that's a lot of people we're catering for. When it's high season, sometimes it can be. You're working straight through. Because it's not something that you can, oh, I didn't finish it today, I'll come back and pick up tomorrow and finish it off then. You're constantly against the clock. And at the company's warehouse just south of Glasgow, the madness of wedding season is starting to show. This is organised chaos. So you might think everything's lost, but it's not. Everything has its place. Spread over 10,000 square feet, row upon row of props, and paraphernalia to fit every occasion. These are the Olympic rings, or our version of them. How many items of stock do we have in the warehouse? No. It's like counting the blades of grass on a lawn. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I don't think we've ever attempted to count. It gets crazy around here. So when people say a tablecloth is just a tablecloth, then a tablecloth is, is not just a tablecloth. Here we have white polyester around six foot. Here we have our white cotton round six foot. Here we have champagne damask. Then we have silver damask. We have dark gold damask. We have white damask. We have ivory damask. We have black damask. Gold sequins, rose gold sequins, champagne sequins, red sequins. Most of my staff and my family class me as a hoarder. I, I do kind of, over the years, I've collected a, a collection of items which is hard to let go. I, I'm always one for recycling. <laughs> So I stitched this piece 11 years ago. Will it ever come into use again? Probably not. We do try and persuade him to clear out or, you know, try and get rid of some of the stuff, but I think his solution is just to keep moving to a bigger premises. So <laughs> we moved into this place about five, six years ago, um, and now we're moving to an even bigger place. Um, I, think, I think we're taking everything with us. One of the many nuptials the wedding planners have on this week is that of 25-year-old sales rep, Shakira. Hello? Hi, is that Mario? Hi. Hi, it's Shakira. We are up to 500 then? Yes, 500 is probably the best thing to go for. Saffron is arranging the wedding reception for Shakira and husband-to-be, Nahid. The wedding reception usually is organised by the bride's family. She's got a big family, very much so, um, as Asians do, um, and they're all very, very involved. When is all your family coming over then? Um, most of them are coming tomorrow, so my uncles are coming from Australia yes. and Qatar. Oh, <laughs> oh God, you're going to have a really busy house. Yes, we are. Yeah. <laughs> So Shakira's family um, are Bengalis um, and they're from Bangladesh. Um, so their weddings do differ slightly from um, Pakistani weddings. Um, they obviously have like their cultural differences as well. As one of seven siblings, Shakira has a tight-knit family, but the wedding means a big change. This is my youngest daughter. She's getting married and uh, yes, she's going to be moving and we're going to miss her badly. Especially, I would be so sad for her. Once married, Shakira will move out of her parents' house in Edinburgh and in with her husband's family, 400 miles away in London. It's actually still very common for the bride to stay with the groom's family and for the groom to actually still stay at home as opposed to getting their own place straight away. I think a lot of bride and grooms maybe prefer to stay in that family environment um, after the wedding and then think about moving into their own place in a couple of years' time. I'm sad to be leaving my parents behind because I do everything for them and they do everything for me. So it's quite daunting moving into a new family and getting a new set of parents. What if I do things wrong and not traditional enough? Even though like I am traditionally, very traditional, my parents taught me well. I'm also scared about being lonely because I have such a huge family here and I'm moving into such a small home. So I, I now have my new family. I have, I have two sisters and a little brother and obviously my husband and his mum and dad. Yes, um, 
In terms of my actual wedding, I'm not nervous because Saffron, I've got that start, like, sorted. So I don't need to worry about that. I've got one more to do. Give me the red. And anything the wedding planners aren't doing, Shakira's family has covered. Today, her older sister Monsoon is round, helping give the house a marital makeover. See if this was India, Bangladesh or Pakistan, or you would know from miles. Decorating the family home. It's such a, a lovely part of the wedding. Not all families do it, um, but a lot of families do. Um, they'll get maybe lights, flowers, um, you know, different coloured cloths and things, usually because there'll be like um, functions that they'll do in the house beforehand. My name's Gloria. You can't have an Asian wedding without decoration. It's not a proper Asian wedding otherwise. So our theme here is red, white and green. So red and Green is the Bangladesh flag colours and then we put a bit of white in it for the Scottish because we are Scottish. So then we're just running that all the way up to the attic. Over the wedding week, the newly adorned house will welcome up to a hundred well-wishers. It's really the aunties that make the party. Because all the, so aunties, the aunties get, get together. together and uh, they start, start singing. Yeah, they start singing, they'll talk about the old days, how they got married and they'll start telling you stories about when they got married and what happened and they'll be like back in our days we didn't have this and we didn't have decoration and oh I didn't even look at my husband's face and I yeah and my, my veil was lifted on the day or some stuff like that well that doesn't happen now yeah. and then this and it's nice because then you get to hear about like the cultural things that you don't know and you always learn something new and then it's cool because you see the difference between their culture and the Scottish culture as well. Hey, does that even look nice? No, that one should be in the corner of the last red one. All the talk of weddings has got Shakira's dad, Izaz, reminiscing about his own. This is me. That was uh, 1979 when I got married. And that's my wife. That was a arranged married by my father. I was here and he looked a girl for me and then he telegrammed me to go. Then I went there and then uh, my father said, your marriage has been arranged and only you have two weeks, so get ready. I said, Dad, can I see her for a minute? I looked at her and she see me and I saw her and we were talking, the, uh, you know, we were just saying each other, uh, I'm saying her, what is your name? I want to see how she talk, yeah? So she said, yes, my name, Amina. And then I said to, then she said, uh, I said to her, can you write English? She said, yes, I can write English. Then she said, can you write my name? And then she write my name. And I was so happy. I said, my, my father chosen was, she was the right girl. Fast forward almost 40 years, and it's a youngest daughter's turn to tie the knot. And how excited are you, Mike, for the wedding? Oh. <laughs> I'm excited, yeah. Also, I'm, I feel sad. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Okay, she's, she's going somewhere else. And I'm going to miss her. <laughs> so it's, I have to be that way, because I came from far away, so my mom going to miss me, yeah. She was missing me a lot. That's the way, that's the way it's life. Mm -hmm. See? That's life. Yeah. As one family comes to terms with the youngest daughter leaving, 50 miles away on the south side of Glasgow. I'm feeling so happy and so excited. Another is preparing to welcome a new daughter-in-law into the fold. We are having guests, about 70 guests, because we have a musical night tonight. <laughs> this week, the Tarek's middle son, 28-year-old optician Hamza, is marrying 25-year-old lawyer Huma. And tonight's party is just one of many to celebrate. A typical Asian wedding consists of four events, the first one being the Mendi, the second one being the Nikah, the third being the actual wedding day itself, the Nikah can take place on this day, and finishing off the events with a Valima reception, which is given by the groom's family. Once the wedding is over, Huma, who lives in London, will move to Glasgow and live with the Tariqs. It's beautiful. We're welcoming another member of a family. I would say we are, I'm actually gaining another daughter. But traditionally what happens is uh, the girl leaves her family home, uh, her family, and uh, moves in with us. And uh, she stays with us, basically. And uh, we're, we're quite open-minded 
minded that uh, if she wants to have her own home in the future, they can both uh, uh, have that. We, we, we don't have a problem with that. We're willing to help yeah. them. <laughs> we're, we're willing to help them. Of course. That's it. Okay. Anything else, Sadia? Uh, no, that's all. Time to get ready. Huma will be the second daughter-in-law the pair has welcomed with open arms. 33-year-old Sadia is married to their eldest son, Habil, and she also moved in after her wedding. Oh, she's helping me all the time. <laughs> oh, she's helping me all the time, honestly. She's wonderful. I'm lucky to have her. I'm lucky to have her too. <laughs> Obviously, all the mothers are going to be feel sad uh, because it's not your daughter, it's your heart is going somewhere. It's part of your body, basically. Obviously, and that's exactly I felt when Huma's coming to my house. Her mother's feeling, I can understand her mother's feeling. And I try to um, say to uh, Huma's mom, which is Noshin, and I said, don't worry, I know the feeling. And don't worry about it, she's in a safe hand. It's, it's a joyous time as well as obviously it's, it's heartbreaking that you will be leaving your own family. But if you've got good, good mother-in-law and father-in-law, it, it just makes it more perfect. We actually are lucky um, because we've got such lovely parents. Um, she's more like my, my own mum and, and he's like my dad. And he's they've made us feel more welcome. Um, and like for ourselves. Love you, uh, Love you too. <laughs> <laughs> Within the community, many couples opt for an arranged marriage. I think arranged marriages are still very common, but I wouldn't call them arranged marriages. I would just call them introductions because for me, when I think about an arranged marriage, it's a case of like, here's such and such, here's such and such, and you have a wedding, but that's not the case anymore. I think they're more introductions. You, they get, you get given that time to see, you know, what your chemistry is like, how you, know, how you get on with each other, and then further steps are taken from there. In the case of Hamza and Huma, the pairing was made by Mrs. Tarek, who happens to be a matchmaker. The Rishtanti can be either a blessing or a curse. It just depends what way you see it. Usually it's somebody who's like an affluential member of the community, you know, they're quite outgoing and they know a lot of people. So that is kind of like an informal matchmaker. Huma's granny, she knew him because a, a matchmaker. She called me and she said, can you find me a boy for my granddaughter, Huma? Next week, I saw the photographs because we're looking for Hamza as well, and they're looking for their daughter, so. And I speak to my husband, I say, Tariq, look, this is such a nice family, why don't we meet them? We'll go and take Hamza over there and we'll see if they get on, and then that's it, that's very nice, because we, we know the family. If we know the background, that's much easier, more confident and more easy to say yes to each other, because we know the family very well. You were showing a picture of me, no one showed me a picture of him, and he said no to my picture, and then his mum said, no, you're getting on a flight. And then I met him, and I didn't like him. We come, came back to Glasgow, and asked Hamza, I said, what do you think about her? He said, uh, I know her a little bit, I cannot uh, know very well, so I need to more. So you didn't give an answer straight away, he wanted yeah. to He wanted to know her, her he wanted more. to know her more, yeah. So, then they start talking over the phone, three weeks, four weeks. And then I came here to say no to him, but then he took me to dinner and we went to an escape room and then we bonded. It was really nice, yeah. Is what, that... the horse riding? You miss out the horse riding? Oh yeah, no. My auntie sent him a challenge um, to come up with my what my dream date would be. Um, and once upon a time, during one of our phone conversations, I'd mentioned that I like horse riding and um, he took me horse riding as part of the surprise. So it was really nice. But unbeknownst to the new lovebirds, Cupid had fired his arrow many moons ago. Huma start digging pictures, album. She start getting the, looking for the old pictures. And suddenly she find out. Huma's birthday, she was two years old, and we were over there. Hamza's four years old, and this is a picture for it. Mm -hmm. That's Hamza. This is Hamza, and this is Huma. Look at the way they're looking at each other. Look, mm -hmm. look at the eye contact. My goodness. So this is basically um, from the, the Qur'an. This is from the Qur'an. A, a verse. Yeah. A verse. So this is, and we treated you in pairs. And this is, this is and this case, yes, since, since 1994. This is Huma, two years old, awesome. and Hamza looking at her. <laughs> I don't believe that, to be honest. <laughs> like, sometimes wow. dream come true. 
Well, was wonderful. Um, very nice girl. Uh, when I look at that picture, I feel like everything's come to a like a complete circle. Like we started when we were younger, and then we kind of went apart, and then we basically just met now. And I just feel like everything's complete. And the whole family is set on celebrating this great love story with the grandest of weddings. It's going to be a good event. It's going to be, uh, uh, well, we're, we're hoping it's going to be quite, quite a lavish event. Glasgow born and bred, Mr. Tarek is the fifth generation of a family of jewellers. I'll tell you the comparison is that uh, when I got married, literally my, my mother cooked a big pot of rice and uh, we celebrated in the house at a small hall. Maybe 30 or 40 people around the table. Quite, quite a contrast to what our new generation is wanting. And on a, on a first trip, it was uh, six months after our marriage and we went down to Blackpool <laughs> for a couple of nights and that was it. <laughs> you know, come back to work and that was it. <laughs> Well, we had nothing like this. To ensure his son's wedding has the 21st century wow factor, Mr. Tarek is calling on the expertise of the wedding planners. Oh, there's a big one. Mr. Tarek, uh, I've kind of known through my mother, my parents. We've done a few weddings in their family. We've uh, uh, used Hassan. Uh, this is the third time we're coming back to him and he's fantastic. He's uh, done it for my son, Habil, uh, Habil. and then uh, we hired him for uh, my daughter. And now we've come back for the third time. This time round, Hassan and his team are putting on two huge events. A vibrant Mendy party to kickstart celebrations, and a lavish Valima reception to formally welcome the bride into their family, which will take place on the west coast of Scotland. Bigger and better, and we look forward to laying on this uh, reception for our guests. I think uh, it it brings all all of us together, and we all have a kind of an input, um, more so the parents, because of course at the end of the day we want the best for our child. We we've laid on some nice parties in the past as well. So in so, fact, some of my 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 friends have literally asked us for for invitation cards, you know. <laughs> so we, no, that's very nice of them. Yeah, yeah. which is, which is very they, nice of them. Yes, yeah. I think Part that's very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Tonight, it's Mendy time, and the wedding planners are busy setting up. So the Mendy is very informal. So it's usually that one event where everyone that's there, their close friends, their family, they're people that you know on a very, very personal level. So you're you're free to be you, essentially, is that one night where you can have as much fun and sing and dance to your heart's content. It's, it's an excuse for everyone just to get together and kind of let their hair down. The theme for this evening's event is Bollywood, and the team is making sure the room is full of authentic touches. A lot of the stuff comes from uh, back home, back to India, so this is all uh, made, handmade there. You've brought that kind of culture back to the UK. These have been sourced from Bali, um, and these are again handmade. This, this, this is handmade in Sawat in Pakistan. We're adding flowers to it. Flowers are from China, so it's a global kind of um, source. It's hard to get stuff from, from the UK. Everything is outsourced from abroad or made abroad. It's the fun part of the business is to go out and source the different items. If you've given enough time, like, sometimes you need a year, six months to get things pr manufactured, produced, but if someone comes in with a few weeks' notice, it's hard to source new items, and then they would have to just choose what we have in stock. For Scottish Bengali bride Shakira, her upcoming marriage means a big move to London to live with her husband's family. So that's going to be your next day bag. At home in Edinburgh, her older sister, Monsoon, is giving her a few sage words of advice. Mm -hmm. OK, that's what you're going to wear when you wake up first day as, first day as a wife. Okay? Sorry, yeah. That's your first day when you wake up. You're going to put that sari on, you're going to put your gold on, and that's going to be like the night before, right? The night before. You're going to do your prayer, OK? Mm -hmm. that, you do that prayer with your husband. That's my goal. Match your gold, put the gold, yeah, put the gold in. 
and then I have... So that's that done. Why don't we just get the stuff you want to wear tomorrow out then, so they get that out of the way. Um, so this is for my Gaihalud ceremony. So this is the dress that my in-laws provided me with. So this is what I'll be wearing tomorrow. The Gai Halud is a Bangladeshi pre-wedding ritual where turmeric paste is rubbed on the bride-to-be. So I went for the traditional look. So I went for yellows, pinks and greens. That's gorgeous. I love this. Oh my God, look at the detail on that. I designed that. Who designed I bought that? everything separately. You designed it? Yeah. You serious? And then my mother-in-law put it together. Oh my God, your mother-in-law made this for you? Yeah. Oh my gosh, you're so lovely. That's so pretty. This ceremony is um, the ceremony where the haldi, um, which is the haldi piece, will be applied to the bride, usually by the female members of the family. Um, and it will get applied to like her legs, her arms, her face sometimes. Um, and the general belief behind it um, from the kind of older generation is that it brightens your complexion and makes your skin um, nice and bright, I guess, for the wedding. So you're going to sit nicely. I'm going to put haldi on you, arms and face and legs. My arms and, yeah. Not my face. Thank You're not going to put it on your face? No. What do you mean? You're not going to do a traditional thing? I'm not going to pay for my makeup and then put it on my face. No, seriously, you're not going to put holding on your face? No. Put it on my neck. We like them, pal. We had, like, the henna paste and then the, the oil, so that can get, like, rubbed on your head. Again, it's supposed to be good for your hair, but I didn't want it rubbed on my head, so... They just kind of touched it a little bit. <laughs> I didn't want greasy hair in my pictures, which is the case with a lot of brides. <laughs> Shakira, Shakira, you have I'm to... too busy smiling. No, you have to keep your head down. <laughs> what are you doing? Be a traditional bride. I can't be tomorrow. I'll ever do a smile. Oh my God, I can just see Shakira. You're just, you're going to walk in like this and you'll be like, that's not sitting right. That's not on right. That's not, oh, I'm not going to. No, you have to walk in, head down. Right, yeah, your head scalp will be here. I don't do that, Mark. No! What do you mean? You have to do that once. You're not going to do it forever. You have to take small steps because, you know, you're a delicate little thing. You're a delicate flower. <gasps> oh my God, are you going to wear that thing that goes from here to there? It's not as big as the other ones. Uh, oh my God, you look so cute! <laughs> Wait, I'll have look like Tupac now. <laughs> no! <laughs> I like take this side laugh, off. You can't laugh like that tomorrow. See, when people come in, you need to be sitting in like in a corner and just sort of be like... I'm not going to sit in the corner of my own wedding. Oh my God. What's wrong with you? I'm going to wear jeans for months. You're a rubbish bride. <laughs> this is irritating and the wedding one's massive. No, you can't say that. <laughs> this is irritating. I can't wear this on the wedding day. No. No, Shika, you have to keep it on. Pain, no pain, no gain. And those, those sari is going to make you sweat and it's going to be heavy, but you're still going to smile, th little delicate smiles through that, none of this teeth rubbish. And no chewing gum either. <laughs> I got my teeth whitened for no reason. No, I don't care if you got your teeth whitened, you're still not going to show your teeth. Tonight's party is the first wedding event. Hi, Noor. For Monsoon, the reality of Shakira leaving is beginning to hit home. Shakira's got a good relationship with everyone. She does everything for everyone. She's a one-woman machine that does everything. A girl always leaves home and uh, so it's hard to watch them go. Just thinking about my parents losing another daughter is quite sad as well. I just think about how my parents are going to cope without her. My brothers, they love her so much. My brothers, she does so much for my brothers. She's like the heart of the family here. and. Uh, they're going to feel it on the wedding day. On the wedding day, they're going to feel it. That's her God and then It's really hard. Asian weddings are like organised but never organised. <laughs> In Glasgow, it's Hamza and Huma's Mendy 
the most festive of wedding events, which often marks the start of celebrations. It's the party before, like, kind of the serious part kicks in and <laughs> you have to give the bride away. But, um, yeah, it's just, um, it's a great time for the family members to get together, bond, dance, have good food, um, and just have a really nice laugh with each other. Um, and I think that's always the best part to look back. And when you get the films, that's the video that everyone wants to see first. <laughs> With the couple formally married at the mosque today, tonight it's time to party, Bollywood style. But newbie husband Hamza is suffering from a spot of stage fright. Very nervous. I stole my question. Why is that? The dancing? He's not, actually not the dancing. Not the dancing. the dancing. Just the, the waiting, I think. The waiting I'm going at. He's not seen the bride yet. She thinks he's five foot nine. Oh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Mendy dancing kind of varies from event to event. I think sometimes it can turn into like a mini Bollywood production. You've got choreographers and months and months of dance practice. And other times people just generally let loose and don't really care and just kind of dance like nobody's watching. With the dance off in full flow, nobody puts Mr. and Mrs. Tarek in the corner. And my husband. <laughs> we had we had a kind of a surprise. We dance as well. Uh, this was a kind of a, a, a surprise that we had laid on. We <laughs> rejoice occasion for Extreme, for us. Yeah. You know, this is the part of the tradition that our son is getting married. We're, we're welcoming welcoming the, the the girls' side as well. With the men they hit and Hamza and Huma officially man and wife. At home, Mrs. Tarek performs her own personal ritual to welcome her new daughter-in-law. This is Habil, my elder son. This is Sadia, my, uh, my daughter-in-law, married to Habil. And this is my daughter, Madiha. This is my son, Hamza, who just newly married with Huma. She's a wonderful girl. She's going to live with us to make my home more lively, jolly, and um, full of fun. But Mrs. Tarek also knows the hardship of leaving your own family. When I was 17, I left Pakistan. I came here. After a couple of months, I feel bored. <laughs> Honestly, I feel bored because that time is no life here. So that's all prepared. No enjoyment, no cinema, no nothing. It's only whenever we go for uh, outing, just Glasgow Airport, that's it. My husband took me there for a coffee, tea, and that's it. And I said, this is no life. Because I'm part of the Lahore, which is very joyful uh, city. And me, sitting in Glasgow alone, sitting in Glasgow Airport having a coffee? Oh no. <laughs> I feel sometimes cry. Then I start loving Glasgow because then I'm going to, after Habil, Madiha, Madiha, then Hamza, Hamza, then Hussam. Then now this is my family. This is everything for me and my world. This is my world. A small world. This afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Tariq and their eldest son, Habil, have a meeting with Hassan to finalize arrangements for the Valima. A lavish reception they're hosting as the grand finale to the son Hamza's wedding. Yeah, looking forward to uh, seeing it all come together, especially at Tembury is one of my favorite venues. Timber Resort is probably one of the most prestigious venues in the UK. The view is amazing, uh, the setting is amazing. Uh, you can do a lot in the room and uh, it's probably, um, yeah, it's probably one of the best that we've worked in. It's quite warm. Yeah. I think it's a lovely day today. Yeah, no, it's been very warm yesterday. Today's the same, I think. Are we doing seating plan or are we going to do no, no, just no, reserve for the it never, it, it never They don't want to do it as much as I'm trying <laughs> we, to tell tried the it before and uh, yeah. it, it, was, okay. it was hopeless. The aim of today's meeting is to nail down the wedding banquet. The daka chicken is okay. Or you could go for chicken satay. Chicken satay's got peanuts. But I, maybe some people's are to peanuts now. Yeah. So we'll just, just go with the daka chicken then. Okay, this is a fish and chips. Yeah. Mini burgers. Like small piece of finger fish. 
No, fin fin <laughs> fish finger. It's not fish finger, but it's it's a small. It's a finger cell. I know, but that's not the fish finger from the. Just no, no, want to clear myself, it's, 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 right? It's, no. It's, okay. It's, it's, then we have the tandoori chicken steaks and peri sauce, the starters, lamb and then peppercorn sauce. So we can serve that on a sizzler. Mm -hmm. Dynamite chili king prawns. I served in a grand martini vase. What about lamb biryani? Lamb biryani is perfectly fine. Do you want to go with some salmon? Yes. I think that's everything. That's everything. Oh God, so organized. <laughs> I'm Good. so excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited. Yes. The son's yeah. getting married and she's excited. <laughs> thank you very much, Hassan. Okay, thank you. Right. We'll All see right. you again. All right, thank you. Okay. All right, thanks. Hassan. Okay, take care again. Take care. <laughs> For the majority of Hassan's clients, food can make or break a wedding. And responsible for delivering delectable feast after delectable feast is in-house head chef Abdul Rashid. It's a traditional Punjab style. You know, all the uh, spices from Punjab, it's called Lahori Fish for the 550 people. Over the summer, he and his team have rustled up mouth-watering meals for around 20,000 wedding guests. The mostly every wedding is go very well. You know, everybody likes to fish, cod fish especially. So I prepare for them. So this is my story. I try to make uh, good food for people. And this is my passion as well. I love the food. And if I like the food, I knew the people will like it. In this kitchen, it's a family affair, as working alongside Abdul Rashid is his wife, Susan. My job is uh, their chef. Just now, I have to make about 100 uh, short cake, and I have um, a fruit try fill about 400. One day she have a day off, I miss her. I really, uh, I feel like I'm lonely here. In Edinburgh, it's the morning of Shakira's big day. At the corn exchange to the west of the city, the wedding planners are busy making her fairy tale vision reality. Right, okay. Are we started setting tables in? Did you show the guys? No. Okay. Hello? Being the busiest weekend of the summer so far, Saffron has had to draft in an extra army of phlegm. We've got a two place setting, okay? Right. For this wedding. Okay, one's yeah. thumping to, uh, away from the from the plate and the cutlery must be sat small fork on the side, small knife on the side, yeah? And then you're working yourself out, yeah. okay? We've got quite a few new starts, um, so we're just trying to train them and get them up to par, because as you can see, everything's really fast paced around here. I'm actually just looking to see that they're set out properly because we've got a few new starts. Sometimes they've been in the opposite direction or we've got two big knives or two big forks. So when that happens, it's like you're redoing the whole thing. Um, so that, that is a bit stressful. You've got too many that you can't store them all here. Some of them will have to go in the van. Well, these are the ones which are going to be used. Yeah, so you leave the glasses there, yeah? Right. But for the centrepieces, all of them down at the bottom, please. Do you know what? I like it when the pressure is on because I feel like then I push the staff. We'd rather just get it done as soon as possible, then these lot can have a break, you know, before, like, before the wedding starts, because that's when it gets crazy when all the guests arrive. But I do get a kick out of my job because I enjoy it. I like, you know, having nothing in the room and then all of a sudden, a few hours later, it's like, wow. And, you know, you've helped create that. So, you know, it's a good feeling. I hope when she comes in, she'll be really happy. Um, I think when you... When you choose ideas from like a computer screen and then you imagine them in your head, it doesn't really ever reflect the, the real thing when you see it here. With just a few hours until guests arrive, blushing bride Shakira and her entourage of siblings have come to check the venue is up to scratch. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi. You look lovely. <laughs> How are you feeling? Nervous. Hi. Yeah, we're good. You're okay? You look yeah. Relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you look amazing. gorgeous. You're happy? Does, yeah. yeah. It looks so lovely, doesn't it? I'm relaxed because I grew up with five brothers and they're crazy. So sometimes you need to like stay relaxed to just see by them. And because they're crazy, we need someone that's sane in the house. And I think that's why I'm chilled out all the time. <laughs> 
it looks awesome. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. When, the, when, when the lights are on, the, ca the candles are lit, it's going to look okay, magnificent. Just so I know, I mean. yeah. Not seen a big long walkway actually in any recent weddings anyway. It just looks like a proper, like a fairy tale type wedding, doesn't it? I feel alright, I just want it over and done with, but my siblings are amazing, like they've done everything for me so I've not had to like worry about anything. It's the day of Homza and Huma Tariq's Velima, the final hurrah to their elaborate wedding. At Saffron's warehouse, Head Chef Abdul Rashid is loading up a convoy of vans to transport the most sumptuous of wedding banquets to the venue. Yeah, it's quite busy. Sunday almost busy, you know, because uh, there's a one or two function going on. We're going to uh, pack all the van now and we just leave into Tanbury and we'll probably see you over there. Fifty miles away at a grand golfing resort, perched high on the Ayrshire coast, Hassan, Usman and their team are already busy setting up. So the Turnberry Golf Resort is probably the most luxurious venue that we've ever worked at. Um, it's just it's stunning. They've got these massive crystal chandeliers, these huge windows that overlook the sea. Um, probably the only thing that's a downside is they're a ban on Iron Pro. You know, they're scared that we might stain their £500,000 carpet in there. Today's staging is one of the most extravagant the team has ever attempted. Planning it for about three, four months um, and been preparing for it for a couple of weeks now. With uh, most of the preparation getting done just within this past week. It is hectic with weddings right now. We've got about 430 guests for today, so they'll be having a drinks reception with canopies in the crystal ballroom and then they'll come into the main ballroom for the actual main meal itself. Having safely made the 50 mile trip from Glasgow, the mountain of food is making its way into the hotel kitchen. We're ready to get service uh, about in six hour time. And I'm uh, get prepared for my other food. And then we'll be ready about six. So we're gonna start service about six o'clock. And you're on schedule? Yeah, on a schedule. Always. <laughs> The flower wall that we're setting up today is probably the biggest one that we do. Uh, we've done it a couple of times before this, but not with as many flowers as we were using today. How do you handle the, like, the pressure? Are you pretty calm? I would say I'm quite a calm person, yeah. Um, there you go. I think over the years, this job teaches you to be calm because it's usually the guests or the family that are losing their heads, so obviously somebody needs to kind of keep it together. And what about the rest of your team? Are they quite good at keeping calm? No comment. <laughs> you don't know what the f you're doing. What? What are you doing? Yeah, I mean, Do you know what you're doing? You don't know. I make that just I guess for them. What? I get for them. So you have to get coke. Yeah, okay. Seven up. J two O. So, uh, many of times that I maybe uh, lose my cool, probably at least once a week, maybe more than that. <laughs> you just want things to run smoothly, and when you're up against the time, and you know that okay, the family are about to come in, or the guests are about to arrive, and you need to get the ice buckets out or the drinks out or something just kind of silly, uh, something quite straightforward and you just need it done like five minutes ago <laughs> and sometimes you just have to shout to get it done quicker. Yeah. <laughs> fix your collar first, then your tie. Fix your collar. Fix no, your no, collar. Yeah. No, Do you know how to wear a shirt? Do <laughs> Like that. Uh, fix your tie now. Fix your tie. Hassan wants fix everybody to be Hassan. That's that's the best way to put it. Um, he wants everything to be seen through his eyes and for everything to be delivered the way that he's he's imagined it in his head. Get a shirt next time. So after about seven hours, we finally managed to finish the flower wall off. Um, looks pretty good, if I say so myself. And uh, still got time to spare as well. Guests are still in the reception area, still another 15, 20 minutes before they come in. So managed to do it in good time. Yeah, I'm going to try and hide from Hassan before he gives us something else to do. He's sneaking a wee break. 
In Edinburgh, it's Shakira's wedding day. Family and friends from near and far have come to celebrate. Wow, look at this. Wow. Thank you, thank you. But it's a day tinged with sadness. I've been tears all night. Yes. You don't even know you can see. We're going to need lots of tissues and later it's on. There's going to be even more tears when the bride departures, you know, from the family. It's really touching for us. My daughter Shakira's wedding, and it's been five days going like that, and Pudu will be the last day, and she will be going to her husband. I feel so sad today because I'm going to miss her a lot. Out front, the groom's arrived at the venue, but he's not exactly getting a warm welcome. We can't let the bride go away without. No, the groom's going to take them away, so uh, they're going to put up a bit of a fight because they don't want their sister to leave. So we're going to ask them, I don't know, maybe for five, ten grand before you can get in. So there is um, like, a, like a kind of cultural <laughs> thing that some families do where they will stand at the door of the venue usually, so the bride's family will. Some of them will maybe put like a tape across the door or a ribbon <laughs> and they won't let the groom and the groom's family in until he pays like the, the bride's sisters or the bride's cousins some money. Hopefully it's real money as well. I've been, I've, been, I've been to a few weddings where they actually gave you like Monopoly money. It's got to be Scottish currency, you know, him coming from England as well, that's going to be another problem. We'll see what happens. Wedding pranks are just another word for extortion. We've been doing events for 20 years and we don't know if people are joking or not. Like, we, we've seen some real fights over this kind of stuff. Like, where it's got nasty. An army here, man. He has to battle through an army out here, so... It's going to be good fun, exciting. Let's see how much he's got in his wallet. They want some money for the for the bride to let us in, so we gave them some money for the gun and wanted at them, and they got our city strings all over us. But we're going in. We're going in. Let's go. You know what? They actually done all right. I have to say, it's a dollar in the floor as well by the looks of it. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy so far. We'll see if they actually accept him when he gets inside. Inside, the couple first separately performed their nikah the official and religious part of the wedding. So at nagar ceremonies, typically, they will be, um, bride will be in a separate room, first of all. Groom will usually be on the stage. Um, he'll be in the main hall. Um, so the imam, um, the person that's going to perform the nagar ceremony, will come with two witnesses. So usually one from the bride's side and one from the groom's side. Um, they'll go into the bride's room first and um, ask permission from the bride um, to, if you would take, um, you know, the groom's name, his hand in marriage. So once the bride's agreed, the um, imam, so the person from the mosque that will be performing the nagah, will go through um, into the, the main hall where um, all of the guests will be. And he will then ask on stage the groom, um, so in this case it will be Nahid, whether he accepts Shakira as his wife. Um, and if he agrees, that's it. Um, they are officially married at that point. <laughs> So it's usually a really joyous occasion in the hall. Um, everyone will get up, start hugging and, um, you know, make their way to the stage to congratulate the family and the groom. Um, but at the same time, it can be emotional for the bride's family. And you always find that um, the bride's family will get emotional at that point as that, that is, they're, they're, she's, they're married, um, you know, they're an official couple now. A new beginning for her, yeah. She can start her life now. I mean, it's going to be more emotional later but the groom takes it away. Sorry, I wasn't expecting so much now. Um, but they're going to bring her out just now and then we're going to see them together. I'm feeling really happy now. My sister is officially married now. The wedding has been sealed. The prayers have been done. 
little overwhelming, but we're happy, we're happy. She's very brave. She's very brave and very strong. We're going to miss her a lot, even though my one of the youngest son, he so sad, she, he couldn't stop crying. To lift spirits before the final send-off, it's time for an age-old and much-loved Bengali tradition. Can we get the bride's brother-in-laws over here, please? It's time to feed the groom. On the wedding day, on Bengali weddings usually, um, there's like a thal, they call it, which is like a big kind of dish that's brought out with either a leg of lamb, decorated really nicely, or even a full chicken. So in Shakira's case, she's got a leg of lamb that she's asked for, um, and that'll get brought out and placed in front of the groom. Three, two, one! And um, all the members of the bride's family will come up and feed him. Um, like ma the males in it and like the extended members um, will just kind of put a bit of meat in his mouth and stuff and just um, feed him. I don't know if it's maybe like almost like a kind of welcoming into the family as well. It's a lovely tradition and it's so nice to watch like everybody get really, really involved. <laughs> and it makes great photos. Another wedding staple most deserving of a photo is the pan display. This is something that it's a must and compulsory in a Bangladeshi wedding. It's called a pandan and it's made with um, beetle nut and supari and it's known as a sort of a mouth refresher after a meal. And it's quite important and it's getting quite competitive at the moment on how to illustrate and display the product. So I have carved a watermelon with a bride and groom coming out from it. This is Shakira on this side and I've also done a Nahid on the other side as well. I've been quite creative and made it a bit magical because I just think this wedding is really big and magical and I was wanting to give a bit of a gift so um, I put it in a horse and carriage just so everyone could come look at it and eat it as well. The last of the barn finished and the party winding down. The time has come for Shakira to say her goodbyes. So obviously at the end of the wedding usually is the Rukhsati, you would call it, um, and that is when the bride is officially given away to her new family, to her husband. Um, typically the dad or the mum and, and extended family members will walk out the bride along with the groom. Um, I know in my own experience it was emotional because you're like officially leaving your mum and dad's house. So it can be a hard time for both the bride and for the bride's family. For mum it's very hard to give away a daughter. Girls are married and going somewhere else, living their life with her husband and partner. So. She will start a new life with her husband. This is the way it's life. Okay, everyone, wave, please. On the West Coast, at one of the most exclusive venues in Scotland, guests are arriving for the Valima of Hamza and Huma Tariq. The Valima is usually organised by the groom and the groom's family, and it's a nice way to welcome the bride and introduce her to extended friends and family. Oh, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But stressed, uh, I hope everything goes okay, you know, you're always like that in an event like this, especially managing about 400, 500 people, you know, it's, it's quite stressful. Everybody's kind of trickling in, you know, uh, there's another friend of mine, he's coming. Salam. How are you? Where's your kilt? Looking, looking very Scottish. I thought you were... You're, you're supposed to be English. Outside the Grand Ballroom, the bride and groom are preparing to make their big entrance. We're, we're actually hiding at the moment because we're not supposed to be seen by anyone. But um, Hamza's waved at everyone as they've walked past, so that they won't be allowed in now. Hello. Are you going to make the dramatic entrance? Yes, we are. We are. What? I think. Well, I'm going to walk and he, he's going to trip up and he's going to fall and then I'm going to leave him and then we're going to continue to the stage. That's, what's going to, that's, that's, that's exactly, that's what's, going exactly to what's supposed to happen. You walk forward and I'll do this, yeah? Sounds like a plan. But I can't fall. No, no, absolutely not. Okay. I'll take the fall for you. That's fine. Cool. I'll move to go. Wait, okay. Guys, wait. Guys, wait. 
Guys, be, be, be. Did they tell us like four times to go? We <laughs> got to go. Yeah, they are. It's not my wedding. Okay. No. Can both of you come and stand yes. here, please? Um, husband. Once inside, the couple head to take their place on a stage thoroughly fit for royalty. Gliding along their own mirrored walkway, complete with pyrotechnic display. A spectacle not lost on the guests. Stunning! Beautiful, everything is perfect. Thank You've you. gone all out. <laughs> <laughs> but there's another very special guest at today's wedding, who Saffron owner Hassan is particularly keen to impress. His mum, Buhida. So, uh, yeah, a special relationship with my mum, quite close to her, um, and as, as you are, uh, and... Uh, she was probably one of the major contributors to the company, uh, to Saffron from the start. Yes, the very first order we had was for, for 40 people and it was a birthday party. And he came to me, he said, Mom, uh, someone has asked for a birthday party for 40 people. Would you cook something for me? And that is uh, kray gosht, meat. And I said, what? I I can't do that. We don't have uh, all the facilities or anything. And he said, Mom, you'll have to because I've already said yes to them. And uh, I, I cooked that for 40 people, the meat, uh, outside in the garden. Thankfully for his mum, Hassan's catering strategy has come a long way since then. We're serving now the main meal. Out back, Abdul Rashid and his catering team plate up a formidable feast for 450. This is lamb korma, chicken jalbrezi, and chicken biryani. Men, men, take him away. Everybody in surprise now, you know. Let them take quickly. Get your tables. It's my responsibility because if I don't give them a good food. The Hassan will come to me and say, what's happening? So that's why I'm trying to give them good food and good service. So people enjoy that. This is a hard bit. i done uh, 400 people and I'm serving uh, four starters, three main course and dessert. And there's quite a lot, you know. Yeah, the food's been amazing. The starters were... Very, very nice. Looking forward to the desserts now. The food firmly hitting the spot is compliments to the chef. I think they have pulled off an amazing event today. The food was brilliant. The salmon was absolutely mouth-watering. Yeah. It melted, literally melted in my mouth. And, I'll try uh, my best. Yeah. Because oh, he, I he promised fantastic. him, you know, yeah. he's a good friend of mine for a long time, but I said I will do my best, so I did it. Yeah. Yeah, if we got the food wrong, we would go from here to down here overnight. That, that's enough to kill any business, as one bad wedding. You're only as good as your last event. And if this event is anything to go by, the wedding planners can rest easy. But the groom is not off the hook yet. You know that we have a very strong past region accent, and there are quite a few people here from England, and you know you have some difficulty, so if you can't, if you can't understand us, put your hand up and we'll do absolutely nothing about it. So you can just put it right back down. <laughs> I've known Hamza for at least 15 years and I can honestly say that he will never change. I mean, he's been the same height ever since I've known him. He just refuses to grow. I mean, they just changed his crib to a double bed last week because he was getting married. They didn't need the mini stepladder though. They already had that from before. <laughs> All jokes aside, let me tell you a bit about Hamza. What he lacks in height, he makes up for with his big heart. And let me tell you, he's a beautiful guy inside and out. He had two loving parents who would do anything for him. Everyone in his family are very loving and caring. One thing I promise you, Homa, is that you will be very well looked after in that family. 
I've only spoken to you a few times and I can already see that you and Hamza are going to get on really well. You both are perfect for each other. Uh, and I'm really glad he's getting married to you. You've gained a husband and loads of brothers. Welcome to the family. As the new family dance their way into the night. We're all having a great time. We're all having a brilliant time and enjoying ourselves. Everybody is feeling the love. People say that you should be wary of your in-laws, but my in-laws are my family and I love them. Can you have another, another crime? sister? Yes. Yeah. Another one in the gang. It's nice to have another sister. Another addition to our growing family. I'm totally outnumbered now. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy and I'm so proud to have her. And the Tareks aren't the only proud parents in the house. I feel very proud of my son. He has done very well over the years. It's a hard work and he had put his uh, full efforts in it. I think with everyone's support, it becomes something. It's not, it doesn't take one person to, to make it happen. So a lot of team effort from our team, Saffron team, and family support as well. That's so nice. See, by the end of it, and the family are happy, it's so rewarding in that way, because like it's a satisfaction of seeing something come from the beginning, from when they first came in to the end, um, and then seeing them happy. For a lot of families, it's like a dream. It, you know, the actual wedding day is, and to see them happy at like their dreams come true is it's lovely. It's such a nice feeling. <laughs> and how do you feel being part of these lovely ladies? Well, I just won the jackpot here. <laughs>